Alright, good day. My name is Mark, and today I will be teaching you the basic flow control using Emulator 8086 Assembler and Microprocessor Emulator 4.08. On the first module or the first discussion, we will be talking about the jump instruction. Specifically, first we will be uh, discussing normal flow, the jump forward, also known as the skip, and the jump backward, also known as the loop. So we will be uh, working with Emulator 8086. All right. So the first thing here is let's just discuss about the the normal flow. So the normal flow, as all code can be executed from the top to bottom. That's the normal flow. So first, it will include the emulator 8086.inc. Move to the next line. It's an empty line, and uh, origin of 100h7, 8, 9, and uh, a return. So let's have here uh, move instruction. So we'll be uh, adding a move instruction here. Move a seven to a x a seven h. Move six h. Move five h. All right. So the code here tells tell the computer to place a seven h on a x register. So this is the first line of code to be executed. As I mentioned before, it will be executed from the top to bottom. And then, we, uh, we will be replacing the value of AX with 6H, and then replace it again with the value of 5H. So let's execute this. So on the execution of code, you will be uh, following this one. This is the uh, execution, the yellow line pertains to the part of the code or the line of code to be executed and then over here is the registers we can see the value of the registers as we go along the process so the emulator already read include and place the origin at 100h so this is the next line to be executed pointed through the line of either the yellow line or the yellow highlight then let's do the single step. 7H has been placed on AX as you can see here. The value of AX is 7. 6H replaced by 6H and then 5H. Then that's the end of the process. So that is how code has been executed using a normal flow. But through the jump instruction we are able to divert the normal flow into a different way this is called a flow control so let's demonstrate the use of a jump instruction jump instruction is uh, as simple as a JMP the name of the landing location this is the jumping instruction and then over here is the landing instruction so the jumping instruction is just composed of a GMP the name of the landing location and the landing instruction is composed of the name the anchor name and then followed by a colon so this tells the execution of the code when encounter a jump instruction to jump from here to here so it will jump here and land here so since the execution of code will go from line 4 line 6 line 8 and jump to line 14 proceed to 15 and end the entire program using a return we are able to skip this set of code the move code has been skipped that's why we call it a skip instruction or the jump forward so how can we identify a jump forward jump forward is very easy to identify the jump instruction is above the landing instruction when you see a jump instruction above a landing instruction that is a jump forward or a skip instruction let's try to execute this 
Alright, so we will be starting with this one. Just follow the yellow line. That is the way code has been executed. And let's do the single step. It will encounter a jump. Therefore, it will jump from the jumping point to the landing point and proceed to return. Then that's the end of the program. No data has been saved on register AX because we are able to skip this part. So let's try to place this outside the jump instruction in this one. That's a started code. From origin, it will encounter a jump code telling it to jump to the A. So it will land on A, jump from here to here, escaping this one. And then proceed to a normal flow, which is which is from top to bottom. So it will perform a normal flow. Line 13, 14, place 5H on AX, place 6H on AX, 16 is a blank line, return. That's the termination of the code. So let's try to execute this. Just follow the yellow line to see how it works. Then it encounter a jump. It will jump here at the landing instruction. Proceed to moving 5H to AX, there you go, we have 5, then 6, the turn, and that's the end. We are able to skip this part. So that is how the jump forward or the skip instruction works. Let's now proceed to the jump backward or the loop. In jump backward, it's very easy to execute. Let's return this first. In jump instruction, or the jump backward instruction, the jump instruction is below the landing instruction. Place it there. Once again, the landing instruction is above the jumping instruction. So let's proceed with this code. So it will be executing the origin. Proceed with line A7. Proceed with line A, it tells nothing but the location of the landing instruction. It's not a command, it's an information. So we proceed with line 9, move 7H to AX, move 5H to AX, move 6H to AX. Then proceed with line 13, it will encounter a jump. It will jump backward, back to the landing instruction. Once again, this is not a command. It will continue with a normal flow from top to bottom. Then it will move from line 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so forth. It will jump back again, again and again, producing a loop. That's why it's it also known as a loop instruction, since it will produce a loop. In this case, if you are trying to analyze, there is no way out of this loop. This is a never-ending loop. It will happen again and again. That's why it's called an infinite loop or a never-ending loop. Let's try to execute this. So from line A, it has been uh, executed 7. Ignore the 8 because it's not a command. It's just an information. Proceed with 9. And the next command to execute is this one. Right? Placing 7. Placing 5. Placing 6, encounter a jump, jump backward again and again, again and again and again in a loop. So, as you can see, I run it continuously, it is a never ending loop. Alright, so there, how can we get out of the never ending loop? That's the next question. This is rarely been used. Since it produces an infinite loop, which will never ever come into an output when used in a code or set of code, the code will never end. That is a black hole. That's why we are using a way to get out of the loop. And the way to get out of the loop is to put a condition. So, on a part of this code, we have a 
different set of jump instruction called a jump instruction with the condition or the conditional jump instruction composed of jump if not zero jump if equal jump if above or jump if below we will, we will be discussing this jump instruction on the next next module so this is the first module the jump instruction the normal flow jump forward skip jump backward and loop